OK, so we're going to have a go at solving this equation, that sine of x is equal to this nasty looking expression here, given that x is between 0 and pi over 8. So I get started with my solution. This really hinges on spotting that if you've got sine of x is equal to some expression like this with the nested square roots, it suggests to me that we could potentially use the half angle formulas. So I'll give you a slightly simplified version of the half angle formula for sine. So if you've got theta between 0 and pi, then sine of theta over 2, so half of this angle theta, this is going to be equal to the square root of 1 minus cos theta divided by 2. So you can see there's maybe some of this kind of structure of square root something minus something else and dividing by 2. But here this is inside the square root. And normally you would have plus or minus the square root because I've restricted the range here to where sine is positive and get slightly simpler formulas. So hopefully this should be fine because x is just between 0 and pi over 8. And if you wanted to prove the half angle formula, this is a consequence of the double angle formula for cos. So if you notice that theta is 2 times theta over 2, then you can derive this from the double angle formula for cos if you're interested. What we'll do is now we'll have a go at applying this to try and tidy up our expression here. So you start off with sine x is equal to all of this. What we need to have first of all is everything inside the square root. So I'll take the 2 inside the square root, it's going to give me a 4 in the denominator of our fraction then everything else just stays as it was, 2 minus the square root of 2 plus the square root of 2 minus the square root of 2. Then what we'll do is we'll divide the top and the bottom of this fraction by 2, so that then hopefully this is going to look like 1 minus something over 2. So then we're saying that sine of x has to be equal to the square root of it's 1 minus, and we keep all of this stuff the same as before, 2 plus root 2 minus root 2, all divided by 2, and here this is all in the numerator of a fraction, all of which is divided by 2. Okay, so why is any of this useful? Well, we spot here sine of x is equal to 1 minus some stuff here, all divided by 2. This is exactly the same kind of structure here, so basically we had x was equal to theta over 2, then cos theta, cos of 2x, has to be equal to this expression here. So what we'll do is I'll clean the board, and then we can have a go knowing that cos 2x equals to this, we can perhaps even try applying a similar sort of argument here using our half angle formulas next. So our equation now looks slightly nicer, there's one less square root in there, but there's definitely still some work to be done. And looking at this structure again, we may wish to use the half angle formula for cos. So I've just written this out here, this is another nice consequence of the double angle formula for cos. So you could derive this from the double angle formula for cos if you like. But basically, cos of theta over 2 is the square root of 1 plus cos theta, all divided by 2, all inside the square root. So we can try and use this now to tidy up a bit here, and maybe remove one of these nestings of the square root. So we'll start off by writing, just like before, we'll write cos 2x, and then we'll take the 2 in the denominator inside our square root. So we still keep 2 plus root 2 minus root 2. But now this is all divided by 4. And just like before as well, we're now going to write this as cos 2x is equal to the same thing, but just where we divide the top and bottom by 2 in our fraction. So we get 1 plus, we've got the square root of 2 minus root 2, all divided by 2. Then all of this is divided by 2. And this is all, just to be super clear, all of this is inside our fraction. Okay, so now looking at our half angle formula for cos, if we have 2x as our theta over 2, then this term here, the square root of 2 minus root 2 all divided by 2, this matches up with our cos theta. So if we double the angle, we should have cos of 4x is equal to this nice expression here. And what we'll do is right away, cos 4x, this is equal to the square root of 2 minus root 2 all divided by 2. We can apply the same trick again using the half angle formula for cos, and then we'll see that cos 4x, if I Take the 2 inside the square root, divide the top and bottom of the fraction by 2, just do both of these in one step, we get 1 minus root 2 over 2, all divided by 2 now. The square root of this is equal to cos 4x. So what we're seeing now is you want 1 plus cos theta, so this is basically, it's 1 plus minus this expression, so now what we've got is minus root 2 over 2, this is equal to cos double this angle, so cos 8x. And this is something that we can hopefully actually solve now. So I'll clear the board, 
and then we can finish off the problem. So now we're almost done after a few really satisfying applications of these half-angle formulas, which are valid, by the way, because of our initial constraint on x, that x has to be less than pi over 8. So even though we've gone all the way up to 8x here, these particular forms without the negative and the square root are still valid because our theta, our 8x, is still between 0 and pi. So now all we need to do is solve cos 8x equals minus root 2 over 2. So basically 8x, then, this is equal to arc cos of minus root 2 over 2. And this is perhaps one that you know, or you can work this out, because we know that arc cos of root 2 over 2 is pi over 4. So using symmetries of the cosine graph, we end up with 8x is equal to 3 pi over 4. So then dividing by 8, we get our final answer then for x is 3 pi over 32. So this tells us then that sine of 3 pi over 32, this is going to be equal to the square root of 2 minus the square root of 2 plus the square root of 2 minus the square root of 2, and all of this divided by 2.